All right, what's up, everybody? Boom. We here. This is it right now. Right here, right now. That's your boy, Vin. And your boy, Psycho. You already know, though. Already know. Yeah, you already, already know, know, though. Both of us. We got a pretty good episode premiere for you guys today. And uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we can get it interactive and funky. Oh, yeah. Funky monkey, bro. Oh, man. All right. So let's get the show on the road. I'm ready for it. So, Psycho, what are we talking about first, dog? Uh, bro. Um, so let, let, let's talk about Apex for a little bit because you've been grinding the hell out of some of that. Oh, yeah. So what do you think of the new character? All right. So the new season is honestly my, my opinion, my true opinion on it compared to the previous seasons is that it i feel it's a bit underwhelming including oh, really? the new character um so the new character's abilities his passive i don't know if have you read on it psycho i have not oh by the way what's up sorgon welcome so uh his new ability is his so his passive is he crouch walks faster right like that's his passive like okay all right so that's not that bad. You can use that in some sort of, like, I guess, sense. But anyways, so you have his tactical, which his tactical is to disable enemies' abilities for 10 seconds. And then his ult is a totem that you go up to, and you be basically become immune for a certain amount of time. And then if you get knocked, then you come back to life with, like, a teeny bit of health. If you If you get knocked in that form... Yep. Yep. So, like, if you get knocked or you get even, like, I think it's even killed, but you get brought back to life through the totem. So, wherever you set the totem down, you get brought back to life. Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. That's pretty crazy, though. It's, it's crazy. You'd think it'd be awesome, but, like, literally no one's playing it. And a bunch of the pros were saying, like, no one's going to be playing this character, like, in a pro league, like, or, like, in tournaments. So, it's kind of like, I don't know what to feel about it. I don't really know, honestly. I played him like twice, and I don't really. Like Zing said that he was throwing it down, and nothing was happening. Is there like a bug for his uh first totem? Yeah, his totem. So you throw it down, and then you got to walk up to it and press E or like the inter interactive button or whatever it is for you. I don't know if that helps. I don't know if you tried that Zing. <laughs> So that's how you use it. And then his other one, yeah, disables for 10 seconds anyone's ability. Which is like, it's silly because it's like, they could still shoot you. I don't know. I don't think it's, I don't, I think it's very underwhelming. The trailer, I thought, I thought that they were going to change the look of the map, honestly. Because by the trailer, it looked like the map was going to get really dark. Things were going to start to look destroyed. Um, but then I was, I was watching like people play it. And the map didn't change too much. You said that there was, like, a couple new spots, though? Yeah, so, like, the Hammond Robotics thing is the people who basically created this this Revenant guy. And they took over or whatever, and then shit just went... It just all went to shit since Revenant came. Um, and so, like, there's, like, lava pits and all this stuff, which I don't know if you've... I don't think a lot of people would know this, but the pits... So there's lava pits, like, where... um where the city was, capital city. It's like all torn up, buildings are messed up. Um there's pits now like filled with lava, but um anyways, if you go actually fall into this pit of lava, I thought when I fell into one by accident, I thought I was going to die, but instead what happened was you actually like launch yourself back up. Like it gives you like a mini like like jump like whenever you deploy from the jump ship it literally feels like that. Like, you come right back up. You oh, don't die, but you heck? take damage, which is actually pretty tight, like, honestly, because a lot of people have used that aggressively, like, towards the end zone. To like, either attack or get out. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I've gotten destroyed. Like, this one match, some team jumped into that purposely, started leaping forward to me to, like, rush me. So it's basically, like, an Octane's ult, which was actually pretty smart of them, and they ended up winning, so. Very well. <laughs> have they talked about adding anything whatever happened to like that new shield 
meta that they were going to come out with. I I have no idea. There's been no nothing on it. Like I don't know if they're waiting for maybe the split to happen, but there's been absolutely like no difference with the shields. They're probably waiting for the split because I know like um, Shroud was saying how it's it's going to have to be tested. It's going to have to be worked. For sure, for sure, and like the RNG though, I will tell you, like with shields, has gotten way better. Oh yeah, way better. There's so much. There's so many purple shields, which is it's good. It's better than what it was before, but it's still like it's very common to run into someone who has like a level three shield off the rip anywhere that you're at. But the one downside to season four, which is like the update to the patch, which is so stupid, is that like. They didn't fix any of their bugs. Like, none. Like, the audio's worse, in my opinion. Dude, the audio has always been garbage. Bro, it is terrible. Like, you can't hear anyone coming up behind you. I've died so many times with that shit. And then, like, on top of that, they still have the jump ship or whatever when, like, you're jumping. And it's, like, that glitch of just, like, a shit ton of glowing lights, like, going off. And you just hear, like, nothing but white noise happening. I don't know if you remember that, but they didn't fix that either. Jesus. The regis registering is still off. It's it's just like what what's going on. So Game's how's it gonna crashes. be when they add the split? You got you got two maps now. Still got bug fixes of your new one. I don't. Know. I don't know. I I think they're trying to move really quick. Which which is funny because when it first came out, they weren't moving fast enough. You know they were yeah. they were losing players because the game was just staying stagnant. But now. It seems like they're pushing they're pushing too fast. They're not fixing bugs before sending out new things. That's how it is now, man. Like people are just they just want to release something new, something exciting to get play, and then they just forget completely about the importance of a game. And like audio is one of the it's like the biggest thing. It's your sense. It's knowing where everything's happening. And they can't have that right. So Audio is cheeks where I hear my teammates' footsteps <laughs> louder than the enemies. <laughs> Dude, it's true, man. And like, um, it is very true that you can hear your teammates and then you think it's an enemy. And then it's it's crazy because you could hear sometimes like an enemy from across like the other building next to you. But when someone's like coming up in your building, you don't hear them. It's the weirdest shit ever. I don't know. Bugs, man. They need to fix them. They need to stop focusing so much on releasing like new shit, a new ammo system, a new gun, a new character, a new map and focus on the bare bones of the game. I mean, honestly, I don't think, like, coming out with... Because the, the ammo system, at least of what I've noticed, is kind of small. They, they didn't do, like, anything too big. They were just kind of like, sniper rifles have their own ammo now, which is cool. Yeah. So I think, like, they can still come out with, like, small stuff, but don't push a patch out without fixing bugs. Like, I, I don't exactly. think I've ever played a game that had an update and there wasn't a section for for patching bugs. So uh, yeah. th that is that is really weird. Yeah, it really is. It's it's just strange. It's like and you see that so common nowadays too with games, man, especially like the competitive games. Um you see that all the time. It's like they'll add new stuff and then their sounds off, their registering's off. Um there's glitches, there's bugs. Um all this type of shit instead of focusing on the bare bones. Like how we've we've talked about this so many times, Psycho, you know, like where they focus too much on just pushing a game out and getting it out there rather than the the true like what makes a game good. And I'm I mean we do have to give credit where credit is due though. It's developed by EA, which I still just don't believe. I agree. <laughs> like I agree. EA, EA has been getting like the shit under the stick for a long time. Um, what what was that? What was that Destiny type game that they came out with? I got oh, absolutely shit on. Um, Anthem. Anthem. Yeah, I mean, like Anthem came out. Came out. I was pumped for it. I was gonna pre-order it, and then I played the beta, and it it it, it was it was just bad. It was just bad. Yeah, but Apex came point. out. I don't know how much longer afterwards, and they got up to like 35 million players in what a couple months, oh, or, yeah. or in a month. Yeah, the anthem was cheeks. Oh, dude, anthem that that beta, <laughs> bro. So you would be playing right, and you would be like, I would be shooting at something, and the character would just 
walk to the side and would just keep walking. You couldn't That's... stop it. <laughs> and, like, the oh. beta is supposed to be, like, a teaser, you know? It's supposed to show maybe one really good aspect of the game, maybe, like, a scene or something, and then it's supposed to show, like, um, like, like cool game game mechanics. And I get it. Like, also with betas, you can't expect them to be perfect. But if I can't get my dude to walk straight, I'm not going to buy your game. I agree. I mean, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't even play the beta, honestly. I'm kind of glad I didn't. I uninstalled it. <laughs> I, 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 I uninstalled it. It's so, I got a question for you, Psycho. What you got? What do you think of... So, I noticed, like, the top-tier streamers, top-tier partners on, you know, all types of streaming platforms were getting... And this is super common to, uh, like, promote games. Yeah. But what do you think about that? Like, I saw Ninja and Shroud do that, where they're getting paid to play Apex just to push it more. I mean, that, that, that's just advertisement. I think I, I think it's nice in a way that gaming companies are looking at because I re, I remember when streaming was like first growing in popularity and the biggest question was is streaming a video game copywriting and yeah. the big debate was like when when a streamer plays your game it's free advertisement they're playing this game. To whatever their audience is. So if I'm playing like, let's say I'm playing like 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 that new game I was telling you about Raft. Some yeah. some of my viewers probably would have never never have known that that game even existed until I played it. And yeah, it might not be a whole lot of people, but that's still like three or four other people that had no idea that you know that game that game was a thing. When you get streamers like Dr. Disrespect, Dr. Lupo, Ninja, and Shroud, where they have thousands, tens of thousands of people watching them, I do think that these companies should be paying those streamers to take time out of their day to play that specific game. Because, like, let's say Shroud wanted to play Escape from Tarkov that day, and he gets hit up by EA, hey, can you play Apex for four hours? Yeah. You know, it's... Like, he's advertising for them and playing a game that they're asking him to play. So, yeah, I think 100% that they need to, that, that they need to pay these, these big streamers like yeah. that to take time and do that. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's weird, too, because it's like, you could tell, like, they could pay these streamers, like these top tier streamers, whatever amount they want. But the at the end of the day, it's, it's like can you trust what they're saying you know what i mean like afterwards it's i guess that's really what it comes down to is like what are they going to play after after this like ad is you know run through so i don't know i don't know how to feel about it to be honest it's kind of like do they really like do people really gain an audience or like does the company actually gain more players into the game when they do this oh i got an example one one second i got a good example for you uh one moment though i'll be right back oh. All right. What do you guys think about it? What do you guys think about like, like EA and what they're doing with Apex and like streamers, big time streamers getting paid for this stuff? Yeah, Nabby, get that bread, bro. Um, so I had to let the cat in. I realized I shut the door, but the cat's got to be in here. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like a good example would be Escape from Tarkov, right? That game has grown so much in popularity, and I think that's specifically because big streamers were playing it. I found it out through Shroud. If it wasn't for Shroud, I would have not known that that game even existed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's just one of the big importance of, you know, streamers playing games, taking time to, to play that company's specific game. I know uh, EA's paid Proud and Dr. Disrespect. I think they, like, Dr. Disrespect had to play for, like, what do you say, like, the next seven hours was sponsored by EA? Yeah. 
and it's yeah. their way of like showing off their like like the new stuff right because like back when i was streaming paragon the most active days were big update days so when you have a game like apex and they come out the season four update some people are at work they can't play it um they're gonna pay these streamers to play it that way people at work or at home that that haven't played it yet can see it and watch it and make their opinions off of it before they can play it yeah i agree i agree and it's it's crazy that like shroud is so into that game too Oh, he. Like, I, he, I've been seeing him grind that game, man. He this freaking loves it. Cool. And apparently, well, the servers are down today, according to Sorgon. So, yeah, we're used to that too. Servers cry Russian tears. Yeah. Oh, it's a Russian game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Rocket League, man. Like last week. Hmm. Speaking oh of, they yeah, actually, they had they had to push um the RLCS last week. It was supposed to start last week. It started uh yesterday, ah. and it was due to the servers being down. So it was like a serious thing, and of course it was on the day of my tournament too. Oh, so. of course, there's no better day to do it, dude. It's insane, man. I've been playing that for so long, but I don't know. They they apparently fixed these servers, and nothing's changed in my opinion. But whatever. I didn't think there was really that much server problems. Right. I don't know. I I I, th I thought that was weird as well. Because when when I got on your stream and you were like, it's been down for I think forty five minutes already by the time I got on there, and I was like, dang, that's not coming up. Yeah, that's not yeah. going up. Yep. Nope. Nothing happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. I mean. On that note, I guess, like, what are you, what are you seeing for the talk show, Psycho? What, what am I you... seeing? Yeah, yeah, for the future. What's going on with it? Yeah, it's a deep question. It's a deep question. I mean, I would love for us to, at some point, have our own location. I think that's, like, the biggest thing. Yeah, have our own I location, agree. be able to do it longer. Yep. So that'd be double yeah because i mean like where we recorded that trailer that's where i would like to be in some way why well, what you thinking what you got um yeah along the same lines i think honestly is just like one spot to do it all in but um i definitely want to get um more i guess more of that uh i don't know I think just more like I guess like one set thing, you know what I mean, like its own thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the same thing. Like, I would love for we probably need to talk about this as well. I would love for the drop to be its own channel. Yeah. Um. One spot, one location. Yeah. Good to go. Yep, because I think that would. I was just gonna ask that. Yeah, yeah. I would like the drop to be its own, its own mixer channel, have our own location, nice setup. Hey, I don't know, dude. Guess who knows where this could go, bro. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and I can't wait till we have our own um, like server kind of set up for whoever wants to jump in and actually say whatever they want or whatever it is. Oh yeah, own. yeah. We would need our own dis. It would have its own Discord server. Um, I don't know. It's it's just all gonna depend on like the traffic, really. Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. We need to get more people. Speak your minds, people. Cause yeah, I mean, me, me, and Vin's plan is basically like so. We'll have we'll have small talking points throughout throughout the show. And then we'll have what's called like a hot drop. And then with the hot drop, that's going to be what we feel is like big news. You know, let's say new game coming out, um, old games getting big updates. Maybe something happened in the streaming world and we want to cover it. Um, things like that. And then we're going to have portions in that hot drop where there's. If you guys want to say your piece, yeah, there's chat. 
but if you want to be part of the conversation, um, we'll invite you to that server. You'll say your piece. You know, things like that is where we really want to go with it. We want it to be as interactive as possible. Um, can't wait for the new Fortnite update because. Oh, dude. Okay. Yeah. For, we're talking about Fortnite a little bit later. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a couple things to talk about with that. <laughs> but, I think Psycho really wants to um, wants to go into depth with what he's been playing, which is Escape from Tarkov. I think he really wants to touch on that. Uh, I go mean, into honestly, that? I, I would love to hear more about it, to be honest. Like, what you think about it or, like, what they can improve on. Because I know you've mentioned to me, like, what the game is about. But was there anything you think would need a change in that game or improve uh this is gonna sound bad but a lot um (laughs) it is beta it's been in beta for probably about four years now um but do keep in mind as well beta doesn't really mean too much because the reason why fortnite is still in beta and somebody was explaining me to uh a little bit was explaining it to me a little bit before where it just allows the the developers to make frequent changes. Once a game is like completely out and open release, it becomes a lot harder to make big changes. They can keep up yeah. So basically they can just keep they can keep updating it, they can keep making changes and they don't have to worry about you know any legal aspect of it being an actual game and that people are like or not actual game, but like a full game. A $60 game and then people are complaining because they keep changing stuff well if it's a beta you can't really complain about it because yeah. it, it's it's a working progress um, but the 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 audio is one of the biggest things because in that game audio is everything it's super important and actually I was playing last night and some dude got behind me and the rest of my squad and just laid us out and there was no footprints at all or no no feet sound or whatever the fuck um the audio definitely needs to be fixed because it's very important aspect of the game the servers have been really good like yesterday we were only waiting like four or five minutes but you can wait upwards to like 20 and just last weekend, I actually was playing with uh, Nappy, and we waited 45 minutes and didn't even get into a match. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So they, the, yesterday, the queue times were, were pretty good, um, but they, they, can get, they can get very high. That's insane, man. 45 minutes? Yeah. They can get, they can get really high. Wait, did you, did you actually wait? Like the solid forty five minutes. Oh no, yeah, the timer and everything. We sat there, and I was watching because Escape from Tarkov actually has um, it's a storyline driven game, so you can go on YouTube and uh, watch their like fifteen minute videos. They're actually really fucking good. So I was basically watching that as we were waiting for the game to to show up or wait waiting to get into a game, and it just didn't happen. We hit like forty five, forty seven minute mark. And we just called it a night. It's like I don't, I don't think we're getting into it. Damn, man, that is insane. So wait, so did you didn't end up in the actual game? Then you didn't get a match. No, we never got in. Woo! We never got in. My God, dude, that's, I thought smite keys were long. No, <laughs> no, those those keys can be pretty bad. And I mean, sometimes servers will just abruptly go down. Um, so. There have been people that, when when the servers go down, they'll complain because they'll just finish a raid, they'll just get out of a raid, and the server will go down and they'll lose everything. Um, so it's it's one of those things. Like if you do get it, you know, purchase like the the basic forty four dollar one, and yeah. just kind of play it out. See see how you feel. You know, um, have an open mind, and then if you do really enjoy it. Then jump and get to like the bigger packs because there are people that bought like the ninety four dollar or it's not ninety four it's like one hundred and twenty something crazy dollars yeah yeah and they bought that right away and then complained because they paid over a hundred bucks for the game well you didn't have to for one it, that's crazy yeah there there are some issues but it's it's a really fun game yeah I mean honestly seeing you you grind the hell out of that game so 
honestly, it seems like a great game. I mean, I, I, need, been... I need to get on that. Yeah, dude, a hundred percent. Because like, I'm, I am so invested into getting gear, selling gear, building up the hideout. Like, it just you just get immersed into it, and it's not as simple. It's not as simple as just dropping into the map and collecting stuff. Like when when you go into a zone, this you're going into like like when you get into a firefight, it's it's hyper realistic and it's very it's very tactical. So a firefight is like in in this first person shooter is actually like heart racing. Ooh, because. There's you know, so much on the line. There is all, all any gear that you went in with, and all the gear you picked up as you were progressing through, you know, whatever map you picked. You get into a big firefight. One of you is losing your gear. Yeah. So it's there. It's there's a lot on the line, and it's adrenaline. Like it's a, it's a lot of fun. And then you get you get a squad going, and you're all going in there. And you got each other's backs, and then you get into a firefight with like maybe some scabs or maybe another group, and yeah. it's it's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, I could see how that becomes addicting too, because well, it's like if you grind so much in that game, you end up with so much stuff, and then you lose some of it that you weren't able to like you know hold back or whatever. You went into the into the match with certain certain stuff, and then you lose it. I could see how that becomes like. Almost a vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can, but I was talking to somebody last night about it because the game, the game is very harsh to new players. Your first two weeks is going to, it, it's going to suck because you're not going to have a lot of gear. You're going to have gear fear and you're going to hold on to all this gear because you don't want to lose it. And you're going to be too scared to go on the map with this gun because you really like the gun. But then after you hit, like, level 5, you open up the flea market. And once you open the flea market up, it, it completely changes the game. And it's not that it gets... I'm not going to say that it gets easy. But, like, especially, like, for me personally, I, I like, I no longer have gear fear. If I go out with an AK and I die, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go... I have I have a million rubles, so I'll just go into the flea market and purchase like an HK and then I'll deck yeah. the HK out. So losing the gear does kind of like chill out a little bit over time. You're still going to have that really nice gun or that really nice armor that you're not going to want to lose, but it, it changes the game a little bit once you hit level five. Yeah. Well, you heard it here guys. If you start playing escape from Tarkov, takes a few a few weeks yeah i'd say a solid couple weeks uh sorgon said yeah the fear fades as much as yeah i mean you just you, you're not really worried about the gear too much i mean i do love the jump oh dude oh my god the jump scares like the game is scary like it is it's hyper realistic the sounds are realistic like you could be crouched on a wall you're walking this wall right and you, you're going to turn, you go to like turn into a building or let's say, you know, you're, you're going to rush to your extraction. At any point, you can just get clapped. Like there could be somebody with a sniper rifle. It, the game doesn't show you where, you where they're at. It doesn't show you the direction you're getting shot at. Like um, the other day, I was, I was on a map. And on this map, there's a train that will sometimes pull in. I got lucky and the train pulled in. So you can use the train to extract. Yeah. I was like sneaking around and I, I came around the corner, right? And there was another player called a PMC, which is like your main account. That's like your main person. And yeah. I was playing as a scab. So I was playing as like the enemy AI. And I had, a, I had this sniper rifle with no scope. And he was hiding in the corner waiting for this train to pop up. The train finally popped up. I was in the right place at the right time. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> and this dude was geared out, geared out of his mind. And he makes a beeline to the train. And then I pulled the sniper rifle out. I lead a little bit. And I send one shot to his chest. Kills him. <laughs> Flops. 
And then <laughs> I bet he wasn't too happy. Bro, I can like if that was me. Cause this this dude had this dude had weapons. This dude had a really good armor. He had a helmet with a face mask on it. Um he had super expensive shit. And in the game you can insure your stuff. So yeah. if you insure it and you die and no one loots it, or if they loot it and they don't make it out, you get that back in like twenty four to forty eight hours. Right. But I took all that shit. <laughs> I, I mean, took all of it, and I made it out. So that dude got nothing back. Damn. That <laughs> sucks for that guy, man. That's oh, hilarious. My God. But that's the name of the game, though, because it's happened yeah, to yeah. me so much, too, where you could just be walking, you don't hear a sound, nothing. Because, I mean, maybe the dude's just laying in a bush. You're not going to hear him. Yeah. And, and you're just walking, minding your own business, and all of a sudden, boom, your screen goes black. That's so funny, man. I can't believe that guy. I'm just, I can't get over that. It's so funny. Dude lost all his shit. Dude, just plops. Cause like, it's realistic <laughs> too. Like so when, you, when you're shooting somebody, right? There's no like crazy ragdoll effect. When you kill somebody, their body just drops. And it's like, Ooh. it's like the most satisfying thing. Like when you're in a firefight and you're, you're shooting at them and then you finally like land that headshot and then you just watch the body like fucking flop over <laughs> damn that's intense it is dude it's it is it's crazy like that, and though. it's scary Very realistic i was streaming i was streaming real late oh really yeah because I, I was getting into it because we were i was doing runs with uh sorgon nappy and a1 um and we were doing really good i don't i don't think i don't even think i even died last night nice Damn pro right here. Yeah, right? Um but <laughs> sorry, Sorg, I'm gonna put you out there. Um there is friendly fire in the game, of course, because it's like hyper realistic. Um so we're we're <laughs> we're we're on uh we're on this map and we're in this like it, it's kind of it's kinda of like a tiny little island that you can get to when you walk across a ship. Um but yep. there was a player scav just chilling in a house a1 goes in there to loot and all of a sudden like firefight starts huge firefight um a1 apparently i I think a1 had killed him but sorgon didn't know that the firefight was over and when a1 came out of the building sorgon shot him in the foot and killed him (laughs) because a1 had already taken shotgun damage and barely survived the fight but yeah, he comes out, and Sorgon shoots him in the foot, and A1 goes down, and he dies. And we're all like, oh shit, is he still alive? And A1 didn't know what happened, and he's like, I, I don't know, I, I guess like I was bleeding or he got me, I could have sworn I killed him. And then at the end of the game, where it does the game summary, it tells you like the username that killed you, and it came up with Sorgon. And we, were, we just started like busting <laughs> out laughing. Fucking Nappy was giving Sorgon so much shit. Like, Sorgon went to the black market, or went, went to the flea market to purchase uh, to purchase ammo, and he was purchasing, like, good ammo. And uh, Nappy goes, yeah, that's great team-killing ammo right there. Damn. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's like, GG's. Shots fired, literally. We still love you, Shots Sorgon. Fired. We still love you. <laughs> he put a sad face in Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's tough because like you can you can buy armbands in the game right yeah. but no like pro player ever recommends it because it's a bright color on your arm so it's easily visible to even other teams so i mean when we play we don't use the armbands we just we use communication and we remember like what our gear is So if Sorgon goes in with, like, a Pilgrim, that's a big-ass blue backpack. So odds are if we see somebody with a Pilgrim, it's probably Sorgon, so we're not going to shoot him. But Okay. But yeah, poor Sorgon. I think he was, like, hiding in a bush or something. All he could see was feet, so he fired at it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorgon, you're off the team, brother. No, just play it. I'm pretty sure A1's gonna get all that shit back because it was pretty late game. 
that island that island was kind of like off course so i highly doubt any of that stuff is going to be taken but i mean we we spread his gear out into bushes so other people couldn't see it so if anyone would have just said he was i uh, would not have had all the, all the nom flashbacks <laughs> oh shit yeah right i mean communication is big i mean if if a1 would have went in there and was like hey I, he's down i'm hurt or something along the lines of like hey i killed him yeah yeah i mean communication's key especially in that situation yeah i know you've mentioned to me it's like super hard to like when you first play to know who like is on your team and who's not i didn't play with somebody i didn't play with Sorgon a1 or nappy until my week mark no name tags yeah really there's good. no name tags you know there's when when you shoot at somebody there's no sound like you know how some games when you hit somebody you get like ticking sound or a little visual ticking yeah. mark you yeah, don't yeah. get any of that so Ooh. you got to base it off of like if they're next to a car and you shoot them and from your position you can see blood on the car odds are you hit them okay so you gotta very interesting or That's in Sorgon's aspect, you know, you watch your teammate fall down. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a clip of that? Or no? I mean, it's... I'll, I'll probably make it a YouTube video. Um, not centered around Sorgon team killing, of course, because it was a mistake. But it'll, it'll probably make it... <laughs> but it'll probably make it into a youtube video at some point to see it that's so funny dude. <laughs> a1 yeah it gets to that screen and a1 goes like wait Dorgon, you killed me <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny we've all been there dude i i guarantee i'm gonna do it one day because like when you're all spread out like let's say you're like in this little town and you're all spread out and you're hearing shots and everybody's like oh that's not me that's not me your alert level shoots up so a half second of not shooting at somebody could get you killed and it's happened yeah. to me plenty of times like as i'm playing with a scav you don't have to kill other scavs you can use them as as friendlies but there's a lot of new players playing the game right now so there are other player scavs and sometimes those player scavs just won't trust you and they'll kill you which Ooh. I mean, you can play it that way, but you're you're really not supposed to. You're supposed to work together, kill PMCs, and take their gear. But I mean, because like I, I've I've walked across the street, saw a player scav, which you can't you the only way you can tell really is movement. So you got to get to know like how the AI moves. If yeah. they're walking slow and they're not really looking around. It's most likely it's probably the AI, but I could tell from across the road that this was a player scav. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to shoot him. And the moment I thought that and turned to the right, he killed me. So it's <laughs> the moral of the story is you never really know. It's intense. Yeah, you, you never really know. I feel like that causes anxiety, bro. Bro, I could make a whole highlight reel of me getting scared out of my fucking mind getting shot at and just being like oh shit is tarkov on steam no you got to go to their website when did that game release about oh, four years ago oh so it's just now picking up then yeah right? yeah it's legitimately like just now starting to that's the website but Very yeah i mean i found out through through shroud i watched him play it for a couple months then I, wa I would recommend watching a streamer play it, ask the streamer questions, get to know how the game works, watch, um, there's a bunch, of, a bunch of tutorial videos, watch a tutorial video, and then buy the game. Um, jump into offline mode, chill in offline mode for a couple days, do some runs without scavs, get to know like the extractions, then add the scavs, Get to know the combat system because it is really rough. And then once you get comfortable, jump into, you know, a PMC. Jump into a scav run. Don't jump into PMC yet. Yeah. Do scav runs, which rotate every 18 minutes. So from the point you die, 
and go back to the or or you make it out whether you die or make it out and you go back to the main screen you have about 18 minutes before you can do it again oh okay yeah the 140 dollar version basically gives you so there's things called um alpha containers you can put things in your alpha container um which is two by two so it's really small you only get like four four things to put in it but if you die you keep whatever in that alpha container and the $140 version gives you the gamma container. I think it's called that. It's the gamma container, which is, um, it's still not huge, but it's a lot, it's a lot bigger. And your stash also increases by a shitload as well. And you get a really, really, really good AR. Ooh. Yeah. It's, I mean, for me personally, because I love the game, it's worth it. So I'm safe. It's worth it. Yeah. So... If you buy the regular version, um, it's only ninety five dollars when you're ready to upgrade to like that bigger one. Very good. And no, uh, Psycho is not being paid to advertise yet. <laughs> yet, yeah. No, this is this is just like my personal opinion. Like I really do, I really do like. The- yeah, yeah. I always see Psycho grinding this, so check it out, guys. Um, but. Yeah, and then I guess I kind of want to touch. I just thought of this, um, but I kind of wanted to touch on like, I want to get everyone's input on this, including your psycho. What do you guys think? And this is still on topic in a sense. What do you guys think about streaming um, and what it holds in the future? Do you think streaming is going to change anytime soon? Or like, what's a new element they're going to release for streaming? Do you think streaming is going to die off eventually? What are your guys' thoughts? So I definitely do not think streaming is going to die off. Um, I think streaming and esports go hand in hand. Um, I I honestly believe by the time my son is like 18 or maybe in his 20s, streaming is going to be, esports is going to be a thing. Like, yeah. I, I believe it was Fox. Fox has already made contracts with some esports team to to like broadcast those things and i think you were telling me as well rocket league is actually getting its small little segment into um the olympics the olympics which is huge yeah so i think step forward i think the more like people understand the more like companies understand that streaming is a big deal streaming is very important um, especially if you're a game developer, getting a big streamer to play your game, even if it's for a couple hours, is is a huge deal. So, I mean, I think streaming is only going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. Because um, I feel like streaming itself um, has been, like, since the beginning when it first came out, like, you know, people started streaming video games, and and then there's, like, the chat that popped up, it was like such a bare bone thing and to see how far it's come is just insane like yeah. there's a stream for so many different things and now even like what we're doing right now is like the talk show thing it's like now they're kind of diving into that whole thing and then irl is kind of like the newer folder and i say newer meaning like it's been like out for years now but it's one of the newer it's things growing. and it's just, it's just crazy how much it's growing so it's like i'm i'm curious to see how much further it's gonna go or if there's gonna be like a brand new folder you know what i mean that's just gonna come out of nowhere but and as far as the esports thing too i agree man i think like in the future esports is definitely gonna we're gonna get over that whole okay boomer era right now oh yeah the there. whole like oh it's not a sport if nascar is a sport, sport right why is he like he's for not you know what i'm saying like yeah and, and, and nothing against nascar oh, it's no. just like i mean it's boring it's as just... fuck in my opinion <laughs> 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 well honestly okay and a lot of people can disagree with me but that's how I feel about golf, honestly. Like, yeah, that's boring. Too. I, it's, it's it's like if you're gonna watch someone play this, or like even poker, which like again, nothing on these things. I think personally, I think golf's the boringest thing ever, right next to NASCAR. <laughs> but um, like e- poker, I find more entertaining. You know what I mean? But even that's like being aired on like ESPN and all this stuff, and it's considered like extremely serious. Like, the, I mean, like poker face is a thing. You know what I mean? Like they take it so serious. But esports, on the other hand, is it's like looked down upon so much, and like it's funny how much it's changed. Because back in the day, like when we were like kids, psycho, it was like 
you know, your parents would be like, you got to go outside and go get oh, some dude, air. Oh, dude, it wasn't. Something. I mean, recording yourself playing a game was not a thing. Right. You know, you were, you were weird. If yeah. you recorded yourself playing a video game and posted it on YouTube, but then like all of a sudden it blew up and it became this huge thing. And now you got, now you got, um, you know, PewDiePie, which that's where he started was just streaming games or not streaming games, uh, uploading gameplay. And then streaming came later. Cause think about it. Every time a game comes out, right. And you really like yeah. the game and you're playing it. What's the second thing you always do? You go and you find a streamer that's playing that game. And yeah. then you watch them play it. Right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's just going to grow. It's just going to continue to grow. Well, if he said, I think streaming platforms need to crack down on the e-thoughts. And I totally agree with that. I think the e-thoughts need to go. I think they're, they're just kind of, like, it's just dumb, in my opinion. I mean, I, I get it. The problem is the term e-thoughts can be very subjective right so like what exactly makes an e-thought in my opinion i think an e-thought is like uh any well girl really that uh is just like underdressed you know what i mean like and they're not there to you could just clearly tell by their motives what they're like you could see what their motives are and it's not so much to like let's play a game and have fun. It's like, let's play a game. And I'm not really going to be into that game. I'm just going to look, I'm going to try to act like a certain way or look a certain way. And yeah, exactly. Wolfie, they use their bodies on stream to get followers. That's honestly what I classify as like those E thoughts. And it's not so much like gaming. I think it is kind of just like, it's, that's my definition of toxic. Honestly, it's like, it's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't mess so, with it. I think let, let's gone. say, let's say like, and, and th this isn't me like defending Ethos. This is just me putting like the second or, or pu putting another like aspect into it, right? Let's say that there's this really fit dude, right? And yeah. every stream he wears workout shirts and um, he cuts the sleeves on his t-shirts, Right. And yeah. it's cut so much that you can just barely, like, not see his nipples. Would you consider that still, like, him using his body for use? Um, yeah, in a sense, I do, to be honest. Because it's, like, and not, not like, I think people are, like, whoa, like, look at that, you know, like, in a weird sexual way. I think it's more, like, it's, like, the, um, like, kind of, like, not, if, if it's someone who's extremely fit, it's kind of, like, not the average person has that body. So I think that draws the attention rather than like it being a sexual thing but at the same time if you look at these guys and then you look at these girls and if they're let's say they're both doing that thing you know what you just said like a guy's doing that and they're really fit and they're showing off like excessive skin and they mm -hmm. don't have to um then you look at a girl who's doing the same thing um is the girl like a lot of these guys who do that um like let's take tyler one for example right like he usually wears like a tank top or like a tank or yep. something on stream but the dude's a fucking goofball like i mean if if a girl's gonna be like a goofball and that's just how they dress and they're into fitness i don't mind i don't care but if it's something that you're that you don't wear to the gym i guess like out in public but you're wearing it like on stream you know what i mean like yeah. it's kind of excessive like or if they're just trying too hard, I think is my point. And then on top of that, it's like, what are they talking about too? So I guess there is more of a specific like definition to it. And, and that's what I think we would need to find out, you know, before like any, cause like Wolfie just said, it's kind of hard though. Cause you know, I comparing agree. cleavage, but here's yeah. the thing. Like now you're talking about a dress code. Right. So, you're basically stating because whatever you do to the females, right? You got to do the males. You got to keep it even. So if you're yeah. telling a female you can't wear tank tops because it shows your cleavage, well now you're telling guys you you can't do that either. You you gotta you, you gotta like wear a t-shirt or something. Yeah. Because people do sexualize muscles, and we I mean it's one of the in it's got to be even across the board. And I think right. that's why a lot of these streaming platforms don't really touch it. Because, like, there was a streamer not too long ago. Um, I don't know what her name was, 
but I read an article about it. She was not wearing a bra and was wearing a t-shirt, and you can clear as day see her nipples out of the shirt. Right? Red flag, right? I, I would agree as well. The problem that popped up, though, is she was not going against the terms of service because you couldn't see their nipples. And I was on the side of, because I think Summit said something where I'm like, no, that needs to be, that, that needs to be squashed. Like, because the moment you, and Summit said this, Summit 1G said this, he's like, the moment you allow females to wear shirts like that, what's stopping me from wearing super tight freaking, you know, leggings or something, and you see in like the outline of his crotch? Yeah. So it's. Yeah, it's, see, it's, that's, really, yeah. it's really, it's really, really hard because it's. I would of, never, I would never do that. <laughs> oh no, I would never do it either. And Summit One G wouldn't <laughs> so do it, but he was making a point, being like, "You make this okay, where's the stopping point?" Yeah, and it it goes it goes the other way as as well. Like you start getting down on these e thoughts. How are you going to make it even across the board without making it seem like? you're you're going down on you or not like you're you're just affecting one side of the streaming yeah platform. i agree and and the other thing too um is that like the one and this is kind of like diving into like even even more in depth with it is that like how and again like nothing against girl streamers whatsoever but a lot of the girl streamers when there are are these like let's just quote like call them e thoughts quote unquote when they're on there and doing their thing or whatever, they don't get any type of like penalty or ban or anything if anything goes wrong. But as soon as a guy does that, or they do something along the same lines, if it's a guy that's turned around, they get like per almost perma banned for doing something that's just like so dumb. Like, I mean, take like even Alinity, for example. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have to really even go into that so much, but like nothing happened to her. Like, what she got like a little slap on the wrist, if anything. Well, you know I mean, I mean, I mean that, that's the thing, though. Like, that's more... That is Twitch. Twitch has issues. Because... I mean, yeah, she, she got busted for some... <laughs> that's hard, because that was straight... That, that was straight thoughts of the mag. She, she actually had, like, a dude's groin in her stream. And she just got a slap on her wrist. Um... But I honestly think that is that is more Twitch. Twitch has issues. Um yeah. and I don't think that, you know, that would have went well on any other on any other platform, for sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean it's one of those things where, yes, that is wrong. But for like a normal female to show some cleavage on stream, you don't you don't have to watch it. If you don't agree with it and they're not going against the terms of service yeah so it's i i don't think it's in any way something that can be regulated yeah well, as far as like the ethos go yeah th there's just like there's yeah. no way that you that that you could eliminate it without being without being sexist in any kind of way because the moment they come out and they're like females can't can't show cleavage well, guys can't show arms. Guys can't show stomachs. You know, like it would, it yeah. would have to go all. And I've heard yeah. some people state too, like, "Oh, you should treat it like your job." You know, you can't go to work like that. But I think that's a bunch of bullshit too. Yeah, I like agree. this yeah, is my stupid. channel. So right. I mean, it. You, you, it's like what you do to escape from work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I think as long as, you know. The terms of service right now is like you can't show even if you're a dude, you can't show nipples. Yeah. Um you know, you can't show groin area, you, you can't show like the ass or nothing. As as long as they're staying away from breaking terms of service, they're they're really not doing anything wrong. And if it's not your thing, you're not gonna watch it. Yeah. So. I agree. I agree. Um yeah, I mean honestly, and I'd be fine with that too, like 
get all the ethos men and women off of here i don't i don't think like real gamers care for any of that shit you know so that's just my thought on it no yeah and and i agree i agree completely yeah but anyway so we'll move on uh that was i think that that was i think that was our first uh hot drop dude Oh yeah, I think that Valerie. was our first high drop. Oh yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. That was that was a hot drop. I mean, we could still talk about it if you want. We can go even more in depth if you really want to get controversial with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think we're good right there. Now. Hey, what's up, King Day? <laughs> so let's see here. I, that was good because I think uh, even the chat kind of got into that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. And then like the other thing too is um, Sunday love that, day. I like it. Yeah, Sunday love day. Um, oh baby, Red says I'm here for it. She she here for the controversial talk, spreading positive vibes, and the train must roll on. Hey, I appreciate it, man. We'll definitely spread the positivity. Maybe in a controversial way right now, but <laughs> have a good one, King Day. Corn says, I love debate. Oh, baby says, I got opinions. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there, there's any there's anything wrong. I mean, me and Vin, when we came up with this talk show, we we definitely thought about getting into controversial topics. And oh yeah, hundred percent. We aren't going to get into. We're, we're never going to talk about religion. We're never going to talk about politics. Nope. Um, it's going to be mostly just centered around, m mostly gaming. I mean, we're going to open up to other things. Um, but things yeah, like gaming, that, we're we're going to talk about streaming, uh, streamers, and. Yeah, I mean, all the above, pretty much, with, like, the whole gaming gaming community, all in one. Oh, I do. Okay, another hot drop. Let's go. Another hot Let's drop. All right, all right. Friggin' chat, jump in. So, there was this streamer I read about yesterday, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to release the name. Throw them under the bus. No, no, no. We're not going to throw streamers under the bus. But there was, <laughs> there was this streamer. He plays... Call of Duty Modern Warfare, not the new one, the older one. Yeah. And I guess it had been a bad day for him. He was getting lit up. He was dying a lot. He's blaming his teammates. But within his rage, and I would like to get your opinion on this as too, Vin. In this rage, he demanded, he was like, if you guys want me to keep streaming, if you want this to work, you guys have to donate ten dollars an hour at least or i'm cutting the stream that's what he said that's what he said word for word and and i watched the clip it was not clickbait it was not like it, it was not twisted words like a clip from his past twitch stream he said yeah. that 100 <laughs> percent. that's okay I mean, that's obviously, like, oh, yeah, exactly, Zane. And the outrageous. only reason why I'm bringing this up, too, is this is the second time. The first time I read about this, it was a female streamer. The second one was a male. So, I mean, it happens in both genders. So, the female was the same way. He was like, I got X amount of people watching me, and none of you are donating. And then started to get real, like, demanding with the donations. So, what basically, what, what, what I want to get, what I want to ask is, where, where does the line cross for a streamer to ask for money? Or should they never ask? Honestly, I think asking for money isn't a bad thing, like asking for donations, but... It's like the way you ask it. And I don't even think ask is the right way to say. It. I think like maybe being like kind of like, you know, guys, like I appreciate all the support, like in an indirect way, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like for someone to do that, I mean, that's that's outrageous. Like 
to say to do that is just like something's wrong with you like no normal person would ever do that you know what i mean especially like a streamer like that's something that everyone respects no one expects money ever like and if you do then like you're fucked in the head you know what i mean oh yeah if you're at that level you're streaming for the wrong reasons like 100 percent. yeah yeah hey what's no, up I, derby I and uh ready made so what up ready made so all right so for the guys that just jumped in um we're talking about there were two streamers that had demanded donations and here here's my thing about donations and this is just me being completely honest personally i would never ask and i'm not saying if you do ask that that's a bad thing right but donations should come from people enjoying your stream so much that they want to um, support it, right? Because with, with without the donations, you really can't you you can't stream for long because you gotta have your your full time job, right? Yeah. So how do you do it? How do you how do you do Do you feel like it's just something that should just happen naturally? For like, for do for getting what exactly for getting donations yeah like, i mean honestly it's like what the whole idea and this is where i'm sort of streaming for like the passion of just playing a game and enjoying to talk about a game with other people then i think the donations just come naturally it's like pushing out good content you know what i mean like yeah. that's that's just how it, that's just how it works like you push out good content and then if someone likes you or supports you enough um, then they'll donate to you in whichever way it is. But to be like, you know, that pushy about stuff is just, it's like something's wrong with you mentally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, I mean, you start to, because a lot of the comments on his Twitter as well, because he had posted, he, he had tweeted about it. And some people were like, get a job. You know, his viewers were, his viewers are now against him. Yeah, because of what he said and it's one of those things where like i've talked to people who are like no i am not i don't see the point in donating to a streamer it's it's a waste of money right and then i've seen on the other half where people are like no i understand the importance of donating and i yeah. think that like these streamers because it's happening so often now, it's happening so often now it's it's really starting to make especially like small streamers look bad yeah yeah i agree and it's it's just putting a it's just putting a bad name on streaming in general like when shit like that happens especially for viewers and then it makes them think like should i trust the person or not you know what i mean Little goal. What do you guys think about it? I mean, I like what Zing said. Um, if you have a little goal or like something people like don't know in the overlays, it's okay. But if you give me money right now, that's too far. And I agree with that as well. I think that's why I like donation tickers because it's not in your face. It's not like demanding any money. You, you set the donation towards a, a goal. People see that. If they're the donating type, they're going to do it because they want to help and support you. So I, I, I don't think that there should be any point where a streamer verbally requests money. Yeah. Like Never. in a serious way. Like I've, I've watched big streamers and they'll joke and they'll, they'll hit like a crazy sniper shot and they'll be like 20 gifted subs right now. You know, Dr. Lupo does it a lot uh, to be funny, yeah. but you can tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the other thing I kind of want to dive into top tier um, with the whole donos and everything. What do you think about, because my honest opinion on, on what I'm about to say, so I've been noticing a lot of top tier streamers, when they receive a dono or subs or whatever it is, not all of them, but a lot of them, I feel like after a while they take it for granted. You know what I mean? Like when they get that, and so they don't really dive into like, being like super appreciative towards it and kind of just 
almost like becoming like very almost like a factory where it's like we just push out like thank yous or appreciate yous. Oh no, you know, yeah. Family. And it, t to me, like even like like I said, like the top tier streamers, when that happens, I I don't know. I don't find that as an excuse at all. And not all of them do it, but a lot of them do it, or they just don't really acknowledge things as much as they would before. And I get it, you can't keep up with it, but I feel like there should be some times where they do that. Because, and I'll tell you why, like, not that it's their job, but the top tier streamers to make a living, this is what this is how they make their living because of how how like successful they are with it. Yeah. So to me, it's like if you wanted to take care of a community, I don't care how big you are, I feel like you should be extremely grateful and take like a day out of your week to at least do something as a thank you to everyone, whether it's individually or like sending out something like a customized email or, you know what I mean? Like on a mailing list or something like that. That I don't know. That's just how I feel. But what do you think about that? Like when they kind of scroll through like chat and they see like, all right, someone subbed for twenty four months, tier three sub, whatever it is, or just a sub like on Mixer. Yeah. What do I you mean, think about that? When you, when these streamers get like thousands of people watching, right? Yeah. And their streamlabs or whatever service that they're use using is just like constantly blowing up with followers and subscribers i mean it, it gets to a point where you honestly can't keep up with it um i think if anybody takes hard-earned money and puts it to your stream they deserve at least a thank you yeah i mean because I, I was again i was watching shroud the other day and somebody had donated like 2k embers and he didn't yeah. see it and then the right. person came back in chat and was like, when you, when you donate 2,000 embers and he doesn't, and, and, uh, and Shroud doesn't notice it, um, Shroud saw the, the chat, of course, and then was like, oh, shit, I wasn't even looking at that monitor. But still yeah. didn't say thank you or nothing. Now, half the, chat, half the chat was like, stop complaining, and the other half of chat was like, he still didn't say thank you. I do not agree with the half of chat that said stop complaining. Because if you're going to put, if you're going to donate money, something that you don't have to do, I don't, I don't believe that there's so much going on that you can't at some point in your stream say thank you for it, I for agree. the money. Following, I get it. When it gets to a point and there's a bunch of followers, you can't say thank you to every single person that comes in when you got so many people watching. I agree. And it's it's funny because you mentioned that and as like as I was just thinking about this, like even on the like OBS, like on Streamlabs, let's say, for example, it shows up like the embers. When someone donates numbers, it'll stay there, you know? Like you can easily see when something pops up there. And you can even I think you can even click on it to see Yeah, who it's it's a it's a much. big ass box. So I just Right. I, I don't see how there could be so much going on that you you don't you don't see it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. And and even that's like that's like giving him the benefit of the doubt. You know, he can, he came back and like saw it, but even then it's like how how do you not see it? And that's just like there's even worse cases where it's like people will donate like not only money but um whatever it is, like the site currency of whatever streaming platform you're on. And they'll donate that, and they just won't say anything, you know, even if it's, like, a small amount. I think the idea behind it is that these people are seeing it, like, like it, there is a value, like, okay, like, someone gets 50 embers as opposed to 5,000 embers. They see it, like, well, I'm going to say thank you to the 5,000 embers, like, first. But the idea behind that, to me, is, like, it, it doesn't matter what amount it is. I thought the whole key was the support. You know what I mean? And that kind of defines who the person is in a sense where it's like, do they care more about the support or the amount that, that they're being donated? Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, we, to me, it doesn't matter what, like, and I've received donations. It doesn't matter what amount anyone gives me. Like I, I blow that shit up. Like I love like throwing out like shout outs to whoever it is that donated, whatever amount it is, whether it's like 50 cents or, you know, whatever, or even like 50 embers. 
to like a thousand members, two thousand members. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter to me. It's all support. Even Sparks, it's like it's support. Like I treat Sparks the same way. It's like it's a thought that counts. Personally. Yeah, because I've I've had some viewers like they hold on to their Sparks. Like when they when they donate Sparks to your channel, that's like their hard earned, you know, electronic yeah. currency. So I mean. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that when you donate, these streamers have to immediately say thank you and be on top of it. Right. These things happen, and you can't. But if you're waiting between matches, or you know the game that you're doing right now, it's chill. There's there's just no excuse why you can't pull up your Streamlabs or whatever monitor you're looking at and just go through. Because like, um, I don't watch Tifu very often, but what Tifu does is. It will get into a match, right? He'll play around a Fortnite. When that match is done, or that next couple matches is done, he'll pull up his Streamlabs, and he will individually thank everybody for the donations and the subscriptions. And I think that's smart. Right. You're not doing anything. You're waiting for the next game. Just go through and, and hit it. Yeah, Zink, Tifu, Tifu is one of the best at it. He's good about it. I think he's really good about it. And yeah, I, I that's really good. You don't have to do it immediately. Like, if, if a big spark drop happens, you know, and you got things going on, or, like, let's say I'm playing EFT and I'm in a big firefight, I hear yeah. the alert, but I can't look away. Right. I will get to it. But there are streamers like Ninja, and sometimes, a lot of times Shroud is pretty good about it, but I've seen a couple of times where he, where he wasn't. Just yeah. got to make sure that you take the time to, to do that. For sure. Right, because those are the people who made you, you know what I mean? Like, they made you get this popular. They made you be able to, you know, not work a regular job yeah. because you're being supported through through them, really. But, and then even how you said, like, Tifu does that, which is awesome. You know, some like I said, not all of them do that, but some of them do it, that they don't read certain things or they're not on top of it. But I was watching um TSM Viz, like, yesterday, and he's not the biggest streamer, but he had, like, 5,000 people watching him um at literally like every stream he does before he starts anything he'll read all of the subs from the ending of his last stream yesterday until the stream the day of yeah and all the donations and he thanks literally every single one of them because you like, should personally and, and the biggest insane. thing is too right donations seem to be the biggest thing and when when you're a when you're an up-and-coming streamer i don't like to use the word small when you're an up and coming streamer, right? Donations are a big deal. But it's not even really about the donations. Views go a long way. If you can yeah. get a good amount of people watching you regularly and you get up to like maybe 10 people watching, 15, 20, you can start applying for small partnerships. And that's really where these streamers' goals need to be at. If you're if you're at like if you if you got a few hundred viewers or you got like thousand view I mean if you're up in the thousands, you're probably fine. But if you're yeah. at like a few hundred viewers, like I feel like you need to start getting out there and talking to like like G Fuel. That's what it's yeah. called, right? G Fuel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like G Fuel. G Fuel is pretty good about it once you have like a couple hundred people, G Fuel will hit you up. Well, well, you hit them up, and then if they got spots, they'll do it. And there's there's plenty of other companies out there. Um, and I would recommend like if you are thinking about streaming or you're thinking about picking it up, um, do research. Find there there are actually small companies that you might only have maybe four to eight people, but they'll give you like a creator code or something. Yeah. So, I mean, there are other ways to make money as well without needing to demand um, donations. Right. And, and at the end of the day, it always comes back to the streamer, the person pushing out content. You know, like if you're being like that, that one anonymous streamer that was like demanding donations, it's like that goes to show what kind of person you are. But if you're like pushing out good content... And if you're genuinely a good person, I mean, the support will come naturally, you know, yeah. it, it happens. But I mean, that's just my thought on, on the whole thing with the whole reading and like the monetization 
streaming in general and streamers and yeah. how they how they handle things like that because i see that way too often where it's almost like they take it for granted like their viewership the community they've built they'll take it for granted and they get into their own heads and it's it's i don't know i to get more into it i don't know how how controversial i want to get into it but i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> yeah i mean I agree. I don't. I, I don't think. I think the excuse of you know there's just too many viewers only goes so far. I mean, part yeah. part of your job as a streamer is to acknowledge chat. As much as other streamers might not, they'll never say it, but like mentally they think it. Where like, oh, my job is just to entertain. I don't need to stare at chat. No, you don't need to do it all the time. But figure it out. You know what I mean. Yeah, your viewers yeah. are there. They want to be known, and I mean, Ninja can be pretty bad at it. Um, <laughs> he can be pretty bad at it. I agree. Um, Shroud is okay. I mean, yeah, if you say something there. and he thinks it's a good point, he'll say it, which I think is fine. Um, but I I don't know. I don't know. Again, we don't have a whole lot of viewers. The most I've ever had was maybe like twenty twenty five. So we don't really know, honestly, what it's like to have a bunch of people and try to keep up with chat. Yeah. But I think when it comes to donations, subscriptions, at some point in your stream, even if you make it where like the last hour of your stream is like a just talking segment where you're thanking and you're not in chat, I think that would go a long way. Yeah. And Wolfie says, but it's nice when the streamer interacts with chat. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly the whole purpose, though. You know what I mean? Like, that's what makes a streamer a streamer is to interact with other gamers. Gamer interacting with other gamers through their stream. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. Because that's how, that's how up-and-coming streamers even get big, is it starts out with, like, it starts out with a one or two two people, right, that want to watch a streamer specifically because they got low views. I, I want to say, who who was it? I think it was... I think it was Sorgon and Nappy, or a, I don't know. One of those said specifically when they came in that they were looking for smaller streamers because they want that interaction. Right. And that's where yeah, it starts. And, and that's, see, that's what I mean by that is like now people are getting the idea like I'm, which is, it's awesome because that's really, that's really like people want that genuine interaction. But that's where it's kind of leading to nowadays is like we know these bigger streamers aren't going inter to interact nearly as much. And like you said, like not expecting to read every single thing, yeah, but at least like, you know, if someone's in there almost every day hanging out, I mean, I, chances are you should you should get some of, some of your comments read. Because if I can do it and I'm sitting in chat and I can read the chat and watch your stream, I don't see why you can't either. You know what I mean? Oh no, yeah. I mean, I've like like what Wolfie just said. I've done that too, where I've gone into somebody's stream with the same amount of viewers as me, or it's like me and you, where it's between like five and ten, you know, not too big. Yeah. And I say hi because either I'm trying to network with you, or you know, we're I, you know I play the same game you do, something yeah. like that. If if I say hi and ten minutes goes by and you haven't said a thing to me, I'm gone. Yeah. And even if I wasn't another streamer, even if I was just a viewer trying to to find another streamer to watch, it's it's yeah. not a good look. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, like I go I go out of my way. I check out other streamers, especially um, like people who don't have a huge following, because I enjoy it. I I like seeing people when they're like, you know, first starting out. I like it. Like I I love seeing that. It's awesome because it it reveals so much of like who they really are. You know, they're just being themselves. But um going to those and like seeing how many people don't say hi or they don't interact or they they don't even have like their music's too loud like simple things like that is just kind of like it, they're just almost like red flags and even though you would tell them something like hey your music's too loud i can't hear you then it's like they don't they don't do anything about it like they just kind of push it off like oh well like it's you know and that's fine like you're entitled to doing that oh don't but, yeah don't get me wrong guys so if you are not the type, it, it's your stream, it's your platform. I guess what, what me and Vin are doing is like more suggestions. It seems like yeah. most of you guys agree that like interacting with chat is very important. But yeah. it's not to say that we're talking crap about 
Ninja's ability to keep up with chat or Shroud's ability to keep up with chat. You know, it's it's one of those and and they say that they are watching chat and I believe them. They probably are and most of it is um trolls or you know, people talking amongst each other, but yeah. I I think that at some point though when the popularity does become a little when you do become popular, I think like reading the chat just does become one of those like things that people yeah, and, like, even how you said, like, nothing against Ninja, like, he's entitled to do whatever he wants, and so is any other streamer, but um, what I think is, like, there's, I think there is a standard, and it's just what streaming is itself. It's, it's, it defined itself, you know what I mean? And so, like, um, when Ninja does all that, it's, like, he'll put in, like, even on his new shoot, he's got, like, 20k on it, like, he put 20,000 hours into it. You better hope this, like, this streamer knows to read chat i mean you've been doing it for twenty thousand hours you can brag about it but when it comes to reading it you don't keep up with it which is the bare bones again to streaming i just I remember feel. where you came from you know yeah exactly and a lot of the times it's it's not really i don't know it's not just because you don't keep up with chat doesn't mean that like you're a bad streamer or you forgot where you came from it's just, it's just a bad look yeah I agree. Now, if your chat's going and it's just random talk, then yeah, you don't need to say nothing. Like, let's say Zing and Woofy are in a conversation. It would be really dumb of us to read the conversation. But, yeah. I mean, I I've seen people, like, jump in and they'll be like, hey, enter streamer name here. I watch you all the time. I, I love what you do. If you see that, I, I think it needs to be acknowledged. Oh, if you course. miss it because you're in a game, cool. I mean, with with uh, a lot of the times, too, when you guys are watching a bigger streamer, it's all about timing. So if they're in a game, odds are, if you want them to acknowledge you, don't, don't chat while they're in a game. They're, like, really big streamers. Like, I've gotten Ninja to acknowledge a few things that I've said just because I've picked loading screens. I've picked, like... They just got a dub. Things like that. Because if they're in the middle of a firefight and you send something, they're, they're not going to see it. So I yeah. also don't want to completely bash it either. Because when chat gets rolling, I mean, it, it, can, be, it can be tough. So the two, yeah. what I'm saying, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the chat's one thing. And then also, like, the support is another. Oh, no, you know no, no, I mean? no, no. Yeah, Physical, like, somebody giving hard-earned money, that needs to be acknowledged. I don't yeah. think there's an excuse in the world that <laughs> that you could be like, oh, I see somebody donated me, like, 25 bucks. I just didn't see it. Like, nah, dude. Some yeah. people have $10 an hour. Because the way I look at money and how I spend money is, like, how long will it take me at work to get this back? How long do I have to, how many hours do I have to put in to get this money back? And if somebody donates, like, 25 bucks and they're making like ten dollars an hour they just gave two hours of time that they weren't home that they were at work and they just gave it to you yeah i agree and then wolfie said sometimes it can be hard to keep up with the chat constantly scrolling up which yeah like totally understand that i think psycho and i both get that but i think the whole and that's kind of where we're trying to separate it is like when someone's donating 50 embers or five thousand embers it's still money that they earned and like you judging off how much they have i think is pretty messed up to be honest and you're judging it in the sense like i'm not going to read this 50 ember donation i'll read the 5000 one yep but the one the, the 50 ember one could be someone that followed them or had kept up with them before they blew up you know who knows how long they've been around so it's kind of like i think it should be read either way and i think it should be taken the same dis despite the monetary value i guess you could say behind it i think it should be taking the same and still support you know so i think that's like where the line is drawn right there is like the 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 donations you get as opposed to like reading chat i think there's an excuse for not reading chat i don't think there's an excuse for not reading donations then you're saying i guess it was a private stream i do remember that what the and hell that's is a private stream 
<laughs> that's really weird. Why don't you have like a Discord call if you want a private stream? You could stream. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's really weird. That's yeah. That's bizarre. <laughs> okay, I've never heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of like subscriber only chat, which right now Mixer doesn't have. Um, but that's that's that's. Yeah, that is very strange. So the story was Wolfie had told me about it. She went to some some smaller streamers stream and that she said hi, and they I don't know what they responded with like some nasty comment and then just banned her because it was a private stream. Yeah, that's weird. Which is like it's it's so strange, but it's not uncommon that people act that way because it's like. I mean, trolls in chat, like, there's so many of them, and those trolls sometimes stream, and that's just how, those are the stream, those are the trolls, pretty much, that are streaming, like, they yeah. just don't give a shit about anything, and they just don't care to be a streamer in any sense, but that is very odd. Hey, this bitch out of here, this is a, this is friends only. That's what they said? <laughs> that is not <laughs> what they said. Oh, get this bitch out of here. That's, yeah, that's, see, that's weird. And that's really Did they childish. actually say that? Yeah, I get, yeah, I think that's, I think that's what she told me before. Is that's what they said. I don't know. I mean, once again, it falls under, like, it's your stream. I mean, there are, just as much as there are people that want that interaction, there are lurkers that don't. So I mean, it it just depends on what that streamer's community is, and and that's yeah. that's where it kind of gets hard to say like, oh, that streamer did it wrong. Well, maybe not. Maybe that's his community. I think yeah. banning Wolfie was a little too far. Because Wolfie, you know, you call it a private stream, but anybody can jump into it. So yeah. you got to have a way of like warning, hey, this is like friends only, or you know. I don't know. I don't know. That's not my streaming tactic, but I could see it being, I guess, somebody else if they're like, hey, this is subscriber only stream. I, I don't know. It's it's weird, but yeah, that is weird. Even if it was sub only, that's not how you that's just not what you do. There's just weird people out there, man. Yeah, weird people. Yeah. Keyboard solo. Got that mechanical keyboard, bro. right, dude? But I think that was a good talk. Yeah, for sure. And hopefully, um, I think 2020 is going to be a huge year for streaming. I think ups, a lot of crazy downs. There's going to be a lot more we're going to be able to talk about on the drop, and we'll have it like. If something crazy or wild happens, we'll try our hardest to get going live and like let everyone know and keep everyone updated with whatever it may be. If it's something you know really big, really controversial, crazy, cool, um, even like sad, I guess you could say like anything extreme, we're definitely gonna try to keep up with it. Yeah, and I think we're going. It's definitely gonna be. Um, right now, it's gonna be a Sunday thing for about an hour and a half. Um. It may, nah, I won't say no more. Right now, that's what it's going to be. Sundays for about an hour and a half. We'll try to keep it going from 4 to about 5.30. Um, yeah. Me and Vin will be uploading videos to our YouTube channels. Right now, it's probably going to be like his side and then my side, at least until, you know, we we get a studio, it's all one place, and then... Who knows? Maybe maybe later on we can make an own YouTube channel out of it. Um, it's all just going to depend on where it goes. But yeah, without but yeah, guys, I think that's that's probably going to wrap it up for today for the premiere. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to come out with uh, a lot more touchy subjects and whatnot, and uh, really exciting stuff. And then hopefully next time we'll get some interactions going on on our discord call and set that up for anyone to be able to join and say whatever they want about any any topic that we're touching on 
And... Yep, and we'll we'll at some point as well, because uh, I did forget to mention this, we will some point as well have a Discord for the drop, where if you guys have stuff you want you want to talk about, um, we'll have a section for it. All that's to come. Um, but yeah, for now, thank you guys for watching. I think episode one went pretty good, dude. Oh yeah, it we went some well. Good conversations. I think, yeah, I think we got really good conversations, and I think everyone liked the uh, the streaming talk. I think people love that uh, that like the um what would you call it even controversial kind of like the the behind the scenes on streaming i think is what everyone liked a lot and it seemed like everyone started to engage with that yeah yeah we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely keep it up yeah for sure guys well thanks for joining psycho and i today everyone i hope you guys enjoyed it i think psycho's gonna be rolling out some streams maybe later i might too so if you guys want to keep up or like you guys want to think of something new to say to us or you've read on something new um on streaming or whatever we talked about today you guys can stop by our streams and tell us there and yeah i think i'm out man yeah that was a good first day all good thank you guys for watching just like vin said peace psycho out yes vin out see you guys have a good one